What's up, Subi owners? Today I'm going to be doing a AC compressor and condenser replacement on my 2016 WRX. I originally thought my compressor was failing. Uh, I'll add a clip here of what it sounded like. I mean, it's failing because it had low oil for too long. How to get low oil? That's what you should always ask yourself. In my case, um, the condenser was at full. And I'll show a TSB in a second here showing how and why this happened. But basically, there's uh, TSB has a new rubber grommet on the bottom here. So without that, the bottom tends to corrode out of the bottom of the condenser here, and you slowly lose all your coolant. Once you lose all your coolant, if you're like me, you go down to about a third pressure, and your compressor has no oil in it. So it starves it and it fails. So to get started here, I'll list an overview of the parts. Get started by pulling off the bumper. I'm gonna be doing my condenser first. I've got my system depressurized. So with the front bumper removed, we can have a closer look at our, uh, our leak here before I go any further. And you can certainly see that uh, there's a good reason Subaru has a TSB. It's, it's just so unfortunate they did not include any kind of uh, warranty or recall with this because where this is leaking, is compared to the new one, there's this rubber, rubber grommet right there. So now I gotta get this out. <laughs> and they recommend lifting up the car. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the mud guard, predominantly two 10 millimeter bolts again. Let's see if I can highlight these in the video, or I'll include a diagram. And then we're gonna, before we get busy and pull it out, we're gonna remove the lines going to it. So we got one right here. Again, you wanna make sure your system's depressurized, and the other is tucked back behind uh, the reservoir they have you removed. So I'm gonna be removing that reservoir right there and disconnecting that line. So Super recommends pulling the condenser out from in front of the radiator. So we're gonna remove these two bolts for the radiator brackets, 14 millimeter. I'm gonna leave the tank for now and see what's um, involved in kind of bringing it back without further work. Two quick notes here. In order for me to remove that, uh, or pull that radiator back so I could access that condenser, I'm gonna have to remove a piece of my charge pipe. I'm guessing OEM can flex enough or it's smaller, but uh, with the process wet vertical kit, I'm gonna have to remove that, uh, that piece right there. And then I am going to have to remove the coolant. I can't cheat, because I'm gonna have to access um, <clears throat> that coupling. All right, with my charge pipe removed and the, uh, the radiator brackets. Let's see, I have additional play here to access that condenser. So what I'm gonna do from here is there are two mounts for the condenser right there. Excuse me, right there. And I took the two 12 millimeter bolts out right there and there for the condenser. The condenser moves freely now. So now I'm gonna see if I can't but uh, remove both lines. Again, one is, one is in the front right here. Another reminder, you're gonna wanna bring down your system. And then second and back there. I'm gonna see if I could access that one when I pull the radiator back. But again, I might have to remove that reservoir per the instructions. All right, I'm really going to remove the reservoir tank. And you're probably wondering, Jeff, why the didn't you just remove it? Oh, it's because I was looking at it and I was like, I'm not too sure. And you know how you're apprehensive and you're like, oh, I'm going to work around it. And then lo and behold, you're like, eh, I got to remove this coolant reservoir. So it was as simple as bending this tab towards the driver's side of the car. And then it, and then it pops out. So now I have the room that I need to get in there to disconnect that line. All right, now I got the upper AC line uh, condenser disconnected. And now we can see that our condenser is ready to come out. Again, we're gonna push, push the radiator back and slide that condenser up. Uh, if I had somebody with me, I'd be showing you. 
Always good to inspect your parts before installation. Uh, I went with this OEM Subaru part, so I did I did line them up though, and and everything looks excellent. Just wanted to take a moment while uh, while they're both out and visible of where Subaru's issue is with these condensers, and I'll give you the TSP again. Uh, it's again, it's really unfortunate that uh, they knew enough to issue the TSP, which put this grommet on them to increase the weatherproofness of it, if you will. And uh, and that's my stock one from 2016. Right before I do install the condenser, I notice some some debris build up against my radiator. So I'm gonna take care of that with my shop vac here. Just clean it all up. No sense of letting that build up even further. All right, we're looking good. I uh, cleaned up my radiator. I've got the condenser back installed. And now I'm gonna take a moment here to replace the O-rings and the upper and the lower connectors. New O-ring installed. I do use a little PAG oil, uh, refrigerant oil, uh, to make sure it doesn't bind up while going in. So that's ready to be installed. i do the same with the bottom one. All right, I got my AC line up there connected and down here connected. So I'm gonna seat that condenser properly. It is pretty much properly right now. I'm gonna bring that radiator back, add the radiator mounts. Um, I'm gonna reinstall my charge pipe. I did seat the condenser and the radiator. I mounted the uh, condenser with the two 12 millimeter bolts right there. I've got two 14 millimeter bolts that the radiator mounts with on top and then from there I uh, reconnected my charge pipe I wanted to make sure that everything is seated there properly so I don't have a boost leak and, uh, and that's that's pretty much it disconnect the uh, the small little wiring harness here and I'm going to check out what's involved with removing the bracket. The bracket and the compressor come out as one. All right, to get to the compressor, I removed my belt cover plate. Now, mine's by Process West. It mounts here and here. I'm pretty sure the pickup spot's the same with OEM. And then I disconnected the power to the compressor for the clutch. And then I get a 14 millimeter ratchet connected to this pulley right here. And when I turn it clockwise, it removes the pressure of that belt. So I could actually uh, remove the belt from the compressor. And then we'll have a look on how it mounts. All right, it looks like this compressor should come out with relative ease. Uh, first, I loosened up the AC lines going to it. So 10 millimeter, just cracking that. And then there are three mounting locations. There's a 14 millimeter back there, 14 millimeter front and 14 millimeter right side and then um, you want to pull back these these clips right here for the wiring harness and then I should be able to finish on un, un, uh, unmounting the AC lines and we'll pull her out so I removed those three 14 millimeter bolts and uh, this bracket is loose which makes me think I read the manual wrong because it was supposed to come out as one but I could see that 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 14 millimeter bolt actually went through um, to uh, another engine mount. So I left, I'm leaving this loose for now and I'm going to disconnect uh, the both, both AC lines since I've got that 14 millimeter removed as well. So I removed the 10 millimeter bolts from the compressor lines. By the way, they're both the same size screw, but you always want to stage your screws um, kind of in order if you have to. Put them in a piece of cardboard and then notate what you're uh, what they are for so you're not losing track of anything uh, I also forgot or did not realize there is one more bolt 14 millimeter mounting the condenser brackets so we're gonna move that and the lines here and then we'll be able to pull that out Tackle that 14 millimeter.
Okay, with that final 14 millimeter bolt right there, you see in the center of the image, uh, the compressor is loose and ready to be removed. I've got my AC lines disconnected and the, uh, the O-rings. I'm going to replace those O-rings. All right, I got the AC line set aside here after adding new O-rings and I've got the compressor ready to be pulled. I'm just going to pull this bracket out of the way here. And then I'm going to take my compressor and put it on my bench. And we'll line them up. Like any aftermarket part, you want to make sure they are they're looking good in comparison to each other. So here they are uh, side by side. From here, as you can imagine, I'm going to swap over the uh, the wiring bracket as well as oh, that's pretty much it. And then um, I'm going to leave this capped until I'm ready to uh, seat the AC lines. And we'll take it from there, one step at a time. Uh, for what it's worth here, I did want to note that uh, my, my original compressor is not seized. It actually spins freely. Uh, with the new compressor, there's actually a little bit of more, a little bit more tension. Which I didn't like at first, but uh, I am in, in considering that it's a compressor and you're going to feel some, some back pressure, if you will, and it might be related to these caps. I'll let you know when I pull them. Alright, so I've got my wiring harness and bracket remounted. 10 millimeter to the new compressor. I did notice my remanufactured compressor, um, the clip to nest it in the bracket was broken, so I just did a little zip tie right there. And I did remove the plug, and it does spin uh, just as freely as the last one, uh, so I feel pretty good about this. Time for installation. The new or remanufactured compressor is back in the car. I have the four 14 millimeter bolts. The back left is the longest here, it goes through the bracket. And then three others are the same. Um, go through the, just see it there between the pulleys, if you will. And then of course the back right. And then again, the, uh, the front right down there. And they're just loosely seated. So from here, I'm going to Re-add my wire harness. I'm going to clip in to the harness and then I'll add uh, the AC lines back. And I'll first torque everything down. All right, those 14 millimeter bolts are torqued down to 26 pounds of torque. And now I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna fasten my wiring harness, both the harness and the electrical connection. And they're going to add the uh, the hose, the AC hoses, and they get torqued to 7.4 pounds each. Here we go! All right, it's official. The new compressor is in. So now I'm going to uh, ratchet this 14 millimeter pulley right here to uh, give me the slack, so I can mount it to the new compressor. Sure, wish I bought that belt ahead of time as well, but it's easy enough to replace if I have to do that at a later date. We got to it. Belt is back on. Just make sure you're hitting the grooves. Hitting the grooves everywhere. Especially down there where we could easily miss. Anything out of focus. There we go. Should look like so. So at this point I'm ready to put on uh, my, my belt cover again. The process west. I'll add my snorkel here and I'll start reassembling the bumper and underneath splash mudguard all right folks so that is that is pretty much it I've got the compressor in everything is all torqued to spec I added back my coolant reservoir and uh, my snorkel for my air box and now it's just a matter of putting my bumper on and putting the mudguard on the bottom and I bet you all know how to do that and uh, Feels good, about four hours right here, so uh, confident anybody can get this done, probably about probably two to six hours.